enough to bear up for us. Come on. Well, this is a keep. Why is Dark Ritual in this deck? Because the idea is if you sacrifice multiple of the Zerberos a turn, then suddenly you can like chain Dark Ritual into. I can show you like. The point is you untap with the sacrifice outlet and maybe like one or two Zerberos on the board. Maybe just one. And then you can like Dark Ritual to get a bunch of black mana. Then Supernatural Stamina and Undying Evil allow you to rebuy the Zerberos. And the extra blue black mana makes it so that you're basically doing the tin fins thing to describe it in terms you can understand. You like draw two cards with this and it comes back from supernatural stamina, then you draw three cards, then you draw four and so on and so forth. And the dark rituals provide you with enough mana to keep like unearthing and supernatural stamina and undying evil. All of that can keep be cast over and over again while you're churning through your deck. And that's the entire idea behind all of this. And then like somewhere late in the chain you cast one of these and empty out their hand. To are like your half your deck. Obviously that is not going to happen a lot of the time. As we saw here we were disrupted and just playing like the value game with singles of Beras. And playing more of like a fair blue black approach where we have some value blockers. That were like elvish visionaries and rotting reds or whatever on defense. Methonical, I think we're playing the mirror. Methonical is known for playing my deck as well, right? White, red, green. Why is it green? That is surprising. If that's actually the case or it's like one of the typical... Oh, this is not the mirror. I guess they were just playing something random else in leaks but I think in the challenge he is usually playing the mirror I mean not the mirror but like for me it's the mirror red white monarch obviously and do I still have that graphic thing up yeah let's hide that better speed should be great there in game once has to find exactly the one electric ray to deal with that. So I will likely have to play the secluded step to build up to 4 mana so that I can run it out on turn 4. But I valued being able to sack my clue here more than putting the Thraim Inspector onto the board earlier. Yes, we can keep holding on to the Cycling Land. Now I want the Thraim Inspector on the board because it allows for the better Screech flashback. And then it's pretty difficult to be the monarch when you're facing down four birds for my opponent. And pretty easy for me to become the monarch when I have birds plus prismatic strands. Hmm. Though maybe I just want prismatic strands in the graveyard first. No, that's probably too, too passive. Because I could protect this better screech from electricery. Nah, I think I want to push for an advantage. They can bolt down my Thraid Inspector so I can flashback this turn, but I'm still fine with that happening. Sure. Yeah, they're wasting so many resources here and they're still behind on the board. I mean, in terms of racing, they're like a little bit ahead on the board, but for monarch control and the advantage of one for one removal there behind yeah searing place version i've seen that before definitely yeah his version is much better yeah much better set up to play an aggressive role those prismatic strengths should be great against this version Do I want to monarch it up though? It's pretty awkward if they get to steal it, but they need two removal spells and two cards. Mm. 
but casting my strengths is also pretty awkward here. Probably my time to monarch it up and just cross my fingers this doesn't somehow go wrong with like Galvanic Blast and Journey to Nowhere or something being combined. Then I'll cry a lot. Because losing monarch when you have prismatic strands in hand would just be a huge blowout. But yeah, basically always jump blocking this secret away this turn. Come on, don't be like that. I mean, one removal is fine, don't have two. God damn it, what the hell? <sighs> no, I'm in huge trouble. I mean, they're out of cards, but they get Monarch now, so I need a creature right away and ever losing the Monarch. I guess Pelicentos for me right away would be the dream, but come on, creature. Oh, uh, cycle for Thraven Inspector. I can't even cast Thraven Inspector. Maybe I should have cycled with different lands. Clintar, okay. Okay, okay, things are fine. Now I need my opponent to. Well, I still got wrecked by like top deck removal spells by my opponent now. God damn it. Maybe I should have taken a more cautious line against this version of the deck because they can like never beat prismatic strengths in the long game but yeah if they find one removal spell in their top three cards now i'm still getting wrecked if i steal the monarch back it's easy gg because then i untap with prismatic strengths don't bolt me yes Okay, now things are looking great again. Though, I don't really want to journey this Thraven Inspector. I guess with my current situation, I kind of have to. Because otherwise, I have to prismatic strength just to preserve the Monarch. Yeah, I should be fine. Keep open strands, keep drawing cards now. They can't really burn me out through strands, and if I ever build up my creature count again, I just get to better speech flashback, which is still sitting in my graveyard. So, yeah, that was the most worrying top deck, though I do have a ton of answers still in my deck, and I'm drawing extra cards now. Uh, I definitely made the game a lot more difficult for myself by hoping they don't have two answers in their hand, and then they did. Yep. I think my version should be favorite in the matchup. But the early game is definitely always scary when you're getting beaten down by Seeker. Okay, nice, nice. Not bad, not bad. I guess I'll just pass and then put them to the test of first dealing with my creatures and if they do I can both bold or prismatic strands defensively and if they don't then I can hold on to those two or only use the bold on my opponent's skyfisher because I'm still slightly bottlenecked on mana for the next few turns but now being the monarch I'm incredibly favored especially if my opponent doesn't It seems pretty safe to respond with prismatic strands for red and then I can still prismatic strands for white flashback. Searing blaze. And that's very annoying. Yeah, but still they don't really get anything out of this card advantage wise. 
Well, I guess if they have third bolt, but then why would they not have done that earlier? That makes no sense, right? Oh, I can even choose. They targeted the same thing. I can even choose white now. Sure. Now I don't even need to flashback. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, that was pretty sweet exchange. I mean, my life total got a little bit lower, but I'm, I still traded two for one with the front side of prismatic strands, and the back side is still a threat. Nice. What the hell? I mean, I don't care, but they had that in hand and didn't respond. That seems pretty ambitious. I don't know. It seems strange that they wouldn't have done it response to the prismatic. I think my opponent could have blown me out pretty hard there. I'm not sure. No, maybe not. Because I would have still chosen white, right? Okay, I will just keep bouncing this wind's card crack now. It Denies me a little bit of mana efficiency, but the life gain actually seems more relevant now. Uh, I'm 4 and 1 in the challenge, so going well. Sure. Sure. I'll just kill all of my opponent's creatures next turn. Not certain if I would rather spew off the bird tokens or the prismatic strands. I think I'm fine with spewing off the bird tokens. Because I have another one in graveyard. Am I? Yeah, probably keep holding onto the strands is strong enough. So that I'm well, I'm not really electrically protected, but I guess I'm electrically protected with my flashback better screech then. Okay, let's get this out of here. And this out of here. Uh, let's not flashback the wrong thing this time. Yeah, better screech is what I want to do. In the other challenge, I flashbacked prismatic strands on accident when I wanted to do better screech. Yeah, that's a blunder I don't want to repeat. I mean, I could run out Palace Sentinels, but I don't want for my opponent to play one. Now, maybe that's not a concern. Now, let's just keep open Galvanic Nest so I don't have to throw my strands away, potentially. I'll just double block the Thraven Inspector with these birds. I think. If they let me at least. Secret of the way, yeah. No, I no longer care about those. I'm at healthy life tot yeah, exactly. I want to be able to steal back when they do this. Well I guess the birds are already stealing it back. So I don't even necessarily need the palace sentinels for that. would have wanted for my opponent to fight over this with like Alchemist Vile and Bolt and then I can surprise them with Pedal Sentinels out of hand so that the fighting over it doesn't actually get them anywhere. But didn't have to signal that to my opponent right away. I guess I'll draw and then just stop the attack from Palace Sentinels. Game should be pretty over now. Uh, good evening, Polski. We are 4 and 1, and right now playing the Mirror in 
round six. So good, going very well. Also, I think I'm favored in this version of the mirror against their version of the mirror, but time is always a concern. Okay, I'll start getting in and probably run out this pair of sentinels, because there's not really a concern of my birds ever getting answered with prismatic strengths. Triple back up, and even though they can steal the monarch from me with their own pair of sentinels, again, my birds will always be capable of stealing it back. So now I have a board position where my blocks on their blocks line up favorably so I don't have to spew up the prismatic strands unless they expand the removal. I, I did beat elves, yes, though my elf opponent threw away game one pretty heavily. What did they bounce? Art card draw artifact? Okay, sure. It's probably better for them to bounce palace sentinels and replay it. Like, that also draws a card, but it forces me to attack into their core sky fisher, so if I don't have a removal spell, that's pretty bad for me. Because I lose a bird, in addition. Seems strange. Mm, sure. Wait, no. Yeah, sure, I'll play the one out of my hand, I think. Pro white. Not certain if it's easier to keep open like untapped white creatures or three mana at this point in the game. Maybe the three mana option was better, especially because my opponent doesn't know about it then. Feels like it's pretty locked up from this point on. They will be drawing like a bunch of Seeker of the Ways and Searing Blazes that don't actually do anything. And like I have Prismatic Strands going and like bird tokens that fly over that they can't deal with with one for one removal. So like time out and decking myself are like the only threats to my current position and. Like obviously not timing out here, but like losing too much time for the follow-up games. But I should be alright. I'll try to play a little bit faster and commentate a little bit less in depth, uh, or at least commentate the same amount of depth, but like not wasting time while doing it, just like acting and explaining. But yeah, they're like thoroughly crushed in the card advantage game and don't really have comeback mechanics that beat prismatic strands, so kind of just going through the motions here. Mm, I probably want to flashback. Uh, should I have done the other while? I uh, probably should have. Whatever. Like if I play while pre-combat and stop both of their blockers, I probably have lethal here this turn. I might still, I don't want to calculate it. Yeah, if they block like this, I think I do. Yeah, sure. Okay, that was a good time saver to end it all. And then second pillar sentinels reaping the graves. And against their version, maybe lone missionaries are actually good, but I don't think they usually are. Sanctifiers are like reasonable, especially against journey. And usually I'm not the biggest prismatic strands fan, but against the Syrian blaze version, I think they have to stay in. Hmm. So how do I want to approach this? That's like four cards that are really good, and then serrated arrows like okay, but not that great. Known missionary probably is too low impact. It just runs into my opponents. 
Raven Inspectors or something. So even though you're gaining yourself a little bit of life, like true, they are slightly more um, aggressively slanted, but it's not enough of a difference for me to want to completely uh, like throw over the way to approach this matchup. Hmm. Well, I guess they don't even have any journeys, right? So this only deals with like prophetic prism artifact land style uh, targets. Let me check if I can find their called the Thaboros list. There we go. Seeker, Gavinic Best, Lightning Bolt, Ready the Peasants. Wait, is that the list that they're currently playing? No, this doesn't have Searing Base. This has four badges screech though. Against four Battle Screech, I would want some Electric Reese in the deck, but they end up being so dead against everything that is not Battle Screech. And we did see Searing Blaze from them, so they can't be playing this exact list. Hmm, interesting. Yeah, I'm not certain. Like, this many bolts can be a liability, because they always trade down in card advantage. Okay, I think I'll cut, like, two. No, maybe if I'm trying to be the control deck, that's not smart. Mm, okay, I'll cut, like, an inspector and a bolt. Not sure. The inspector, like, it's a good thing to be able to bounce it and stuff, but it doesn't actually do anything itself. Not sure. I mean... Yeah, probably. Journey might be worse. Maybe I should just cut all the journeys. But it does help against like Seeker of the Way that the Seeker can't grow out of proportions. But it's possible that you just don't want Journey at all. Uh, sounds very mediocre. But Mulligan Ink is also not great. Okay, I'll Mulligan once. Yeah, this looks a lot better. Yeah, probably it's okay to just cut all the journeys. And then like board in maybe the electric race i'll see what my opponent is doing in terms of how many better creatures they actually do have okay this looks like a bottom yeah i was like worried about seeker but probably it's not too realistic for the seeker to constantly get out of bolt range so so i shouldn't necessarily be worried about it that much I can still find a window of, of opportunity where, yeah, we definitely saw Seeker and Searing Blaze, that's why I wanted to keep those, and also why I kept like a slightly higher amount of removal than I usually would, because out-controlling him seems pretty realistic for me to do. Here cycling is pretty tempting, but I still get like my land drop for next turn. And I would want an untapped land much more than I want a tapped land. I think I'm actually going for the greedy cycle. Though I guess then I should have just kept the planes on top of my deck. If I'm going to cycle for an untapped land. Yeah, that was maybe Lewis. Maybe scry planes to the top and then cycle this with a guaranteed white source already being available was better. Yeah, I, exactly. If they have core sanctifiers in their deck, I would not want journeys, I guess. So yeah, that makes a lot of sense that you want to... It's mu even more of a blowout against Ray of Revelation. Though I think that's a card that not necessarily a lot of people are going to be warding in. Um, so... I guess I can Prism and if I find another untapped land I get to Glintalk. And if I don't I likely get to Windscard Crack instead. I think say think threatening turn four Palace Sentinels is more important, especially against their Palace Sentinels potentially coming down. Though then stealing it back isn't that appealing. Getting ahead on the board. And then monarching is much more appealing. Okay, they just cycle the eye. Actually end up with no removal here at the moment. That's pretty awkward. Well, never mind though. I do need to Thraven Inspector to enable it, or Alchemist File. Maybe both. So.
So yeah, I guess I can just while bold glint talk. It seems all right. Though I guess maybe Thraven Inspector because they are less interested in killing the Thraven Inspector. So if they want to monarch it up, then they have to bolt my Inspector instead of bolting my Glintock, and that works out better for me. Yeah, I, I could see that. Like, present them with the weaker target first, so that they have to misuse their removal spells. Same for Searing Days. Blah. I actually don't like this card that much in the mirror or in general against my deck but it ends up being great here because I don't even have a way of killing it that's unfortunate also they got my clue but I mean that is great is still great or at least it's going to be great at some point and I can bounce land here and keep the Great Furnace in my hand for a while longer. I think them spending 5 mana to deal with these 2 mana artifacts is not my greatest concern. Hmm. Do I even want to trade 1 damage for 1 damage here? It's probably alright not to in this matchup. Like, my late game is insane in this hand. Sure. Okay, I don't have Gorilla Shamans in my own sideboard at the moment, because I felt like they were pretty much losing in value at the moment, but god damn it. I mean, I can steal it back, but currently I don't have a stable board for it, so it ends up being super annoying for me. Because they already have a vial to just steal it back. Yeah, this is not great. I guess I just threatened to steal it in the air with better screeches. Even though I'm not capable of flashing it back right away. But yeah, falling behind on the board and getting Monarch is a recipe for a disaster. Especially if they do have Core Sanctifiers in their deck, then my journey to nowhere attempt at coming back onto the board is going to be like very punished because they get a creature on the board and their creature back and like it snowballs out of yeah i think i boarded out journeys when i last played this matchup and i kind of blinked on that because i was too afraid of uh secret of the way for some reason i don't think that's actually that much of a concern if you are able to board them Electric tree. Yeah, that is not great. Well, I guess the damage that I'm taking doesn't actually make a big difference because, like, whether I take damage here and they stay the monarch or I don't take damage and they stay the monarch, there's not a huge difference between those. I'm like one mana away from Palace Sentinels with Prismatic Strands back up though, so I guess I have to get rid of their Gorilla Shaman now so that I can develop my Great Furnace without it getting destroyed. Yeah, maybe I'll just deal with that one. No, it doesn't feel great. Yeah, I guess I have to, but I would rather target like flying creatures. Though I guess like Core Sanctifier, if I exile 
the core skyfisher is even more of a blowout because they sanctify my journey and then the core skyfisher comes into play and that bounces their their sanctifiers back to their hand so they can destroy the other journey and like just snowballs out of control from there. Oh, damn. Stop. That feels bad, man. I'm not certain if I should have just left open three mana this turn to prismatic strands for no value or like prismatic strands for core skyfish out protection maybe that was better if they tried to see me in blaze here i like pro red and then next turn it's in the graveyard so that i can monarch yeah because now i do need an untamped land for me to be able to do anything molten rain wow yeah i don't have those either i guess that makes a lot of sense that you like molten rain and gorilla shaman and that's like a coherent game plan because they attack the same kind of resource. Yeah, I'm pretty crushed here. Well, I think their plan is a lot worse when they're on the play and yeah, when they're on the draw and I'm on the play okay let's get these out of here I think that's actually correct serrated so arrows helps a lot at picking off the monkeys though that's also very mana intensive so I'm not certain that it's really the right way to approach that maybe I want like one electric tree which can like one for one the monkeys and also deal with potential better screech though I think my opponent doesn't have any better screeches yeah I'm not a big fan of the seekers but it does make a lot like all of the what my opponent is doing is very um consistent like internally they are f focusing on land destruction in the matchup they are focusing on being aggressive. And this hand is super bad against a Mox Monkey. But I think I do have to keep it. Like they have multiple ways of attacking my lands basically. And then my late game is a lot better but they don't truly care because I don't get to cast all of my spells when my lands keep getting destroyed. So it makes a lot of sense. And like Seeker while you're being more aggressive also makes sense. Okay, draw developing reasonably. I really want to be able to slam the monarch on turn four here. That's pretty much every game that should crush my opponent's version of the deck. Sure. Because um, then I no longer care about all of their like land destruction aspects. I think I'll deal with that before I lose Metacraft. And then if I top deck Palace Tentinals, it's great for me. They're discarding to hand size also, that's decent. With Bounce Land and returning an artifact. Come on, Palace Sentinels. Hmm. Not that bad either. So I guess I'm opening my clue up to getting destroyed then. I guess I sack the clue first. There. Because if I'm re recasting Prism, it's like the the same thing as cracking my clue. Though I guess then, yeah. I do still have white mana. Yeah, yeah, it's perfect this way. I'm not exposing the extra artifact land this way. I'm not exposing the clue. So they only get to kill one artifact land here if they Gorilla Shaman. I'm ahead on the board so they can't monarch yet. Feels good. Though still I need to become the monarch, otherwise I might be in trouble against their eventual land destruction plan coming back online. 
They discarded planes to hand size, so I guess that means they are not missing land drops anytime soon. Yeah, I mean, I am a little bit cloaked on white, that's true. I can't go double white spells here unless I prismatic, uh, uh, prophetic prism first. Nice. That's pretty much perfect. I mean, now I do have art double artifact land on the board. So the Gorilla Charm is more of a beat down, but yeah. Monarch on an empty board is always great. And then my opponent's best counterplay is to play their own Pillar Sentinels, but they are far enough behind on the board that I just get to steal it back and protect it with prismatic strands, so it should be great. Serving blaze, sure, sure. Don't care about that too much. Prophetic prism I don't care about either. Yeah, I like my spot here quite a bit now. that out of here. Though I guess I'm doing a bad job at keeping this prismatic strands open at the moment. I just want to play the cycling land. I can bounce land it back to my hand at some point. And I still have, yeah exactly, still have the card advantage of the monarch going. I should start keeping open this prismatic strands to keep my creatures alive from burn. Yeah, dirtling around with prisms. I mean, they're doing a good job of keeping up with me in terms of card advantage in general. But they're doing it in a way that doesn't affect the board all too much, so that like my single answer every turn is enough to do with their entire turn. And yeah, eventually, when we keep trading off resources, this reaping the grave should be great, because now I have de my mana developed enough that their land destruction plan shouldn't be as great anymore. That is pretty annoying though. I mean, I can stop those from contesting my Monarch for quite a while with Prismatic Strands. But it still ends up being not great for me that they have a profitable blocker as well as a profitable attacker. Okay, I have all the Prismatic Strands. I guess I'm not losing the Monarch anytime soon unless they Pillar Sentinels me and there's the backup for that plan as well. Though I will have to draw into enough spot removal to deal with their creatures again. Better to return Red Cycle Land? Uh, yeah, that's true actually. Kinda missed that. I mean, at this point, it shouldn't make too much of a difference anymore, but it was definitely, like, slightly better. Yeah, yeah. I kind of just missed the fact that I had this Forgotten Cave on the board for a long time and, like, blanked out on the fact that I could just be bouncing that. It was a definite misplay. A small misplay, but a misplay nonetheless. Okay, let's pro white here. Also have to watch my time, as I said. Though we're like in a reasonable time position. <laughs> I had forgotten the cave, yes. Very flavorful. <laughs> I am never taking combat damage, no. But they are still attacking me from different angles, like blowing up my lands. I'm very vulnerable to Galera Shaman top decks. They can like cast Pell Sentinels to steal the Monarch from me, and then they have good blockers at the moment, so. 
there's not zero risk of anything going wrong. Like Gorilla Shaman blow up three lands actually pretty painful here. Then I might still be in trouble because I can cast these prismatic strands, but they don't necessarily help me when I'm stuck with a handful of spells that I can't cast. Yeah, exactly. How am I supposed to remember turn one? That is so long ago. Still behind on the clock though. Bet the screech would be great. That's really what I'm looking for because I have all the um, electric reprotection I could ever ask for. Hmm, do I care? Care a little bit. No, I probably don't. No. Like, I care more about the number of attack steps I can deny than keeping my 2 4 alive. I'm not certain. Like, I could definitely take like a slightly more aggressive posture here and keep my 2 4 alive. It does turn on reaping. Yeah, that's very true. I would prefer to have a third target for reaping. Currently, I only have two. But yeah, letting it die definitely does turn on reaping. Yeah, I think I'll expose this course guy for sure. They kill it and then I have three targets for reaping. They're doing a good job of keeping up the pressure on the board. Uh, yeah, definitely. So finding enough answers for all of this is definitely going to be difficult, even with two cards a turn. Well, there's one. But it's possible I should just be burning my opponent out, rather than trying to win the board back because like stalling until I can burn them out is probably very possible I don't have triple electric re I only have one in my deck if I had a second one that would be a good way to deal with all the glint talks yeah I think better screech is a way to get the board back in terms of like winning on the board but other than that I guess reaping the graves is also a way to like have my flyers die and then do a big reaping turn where I get a bunch of flyers back to my hand, but that might be troublesome with the amount of time I have left. But I think denying them like Seeker of the Way so they don't gain life and then burning them out with Galvanic Blast might be possible, though there's two Galvanic Blast, one Bolt in my graveyard already, so that might take some time to assemble as well. No, I have two prismatic strands in the graveyard, no sp no bad discreetures. I haven't drawn a bad discreet yet this game. Yeah, that happens. I steal it back on my turn. Sure. Okay, let's keep stalling and just look for the burnout plan. <laughs> Strange game. Time is going to be an issue. Though I think my opponent shouldn't have too many ways of gaining life. Yeah. Oh, damn. There one radiant fountain or whatever. Okay, that makes the burnout plan a lot worse. 
Yeah, I think I'm in trouble of timing out because. Okay. I still have eight, seventeen points of burn in my deck, so not impossible. But I do need to draw a ton of cards to make that happen. Sure. Still want my prismatic strengths to always name white, but I will run out of prismatic strengths at some point as well. Which is an issue. I can't stall forever. I need to get something going. Before the four fox that I have left are over. Sure. Now oh, my reaping the graves is great though. Come on, let's just draw all the bolts. Well, I guess not. Also, come. What the hell? Why is it not resolving? If my graveyard is open, F2 doesn't work. That's frustrating. Because I was like F2, F2, F2 to make it resolve. But like, graveyard was open, so it didn't let me. That's so tilting. So I lost some time there for no real reason. Just draw all my burn spells, please, quickly. Sure. At least they're not respecting that ability for me to burn them out. Though I guess if they draw bounce lands, they will always use this radiant fountain. But they're not like core sky fishing radiant fountains or something. So they don't expect my hand to be full of burn, which it's currently not though. <laughs> it's difficult for them to know that unless they're watching my stream, but like it's very reasonable for me to have like seven points of burn here or eleven points of burn with double Gavanic Blast potential. So disrespecting that possibility is definitely dangerous. For opponent. So I don't even need to strands here. Probably do want to strands though. Yeah, I think I do. Or maybe I don't. Yeah, I guess if they bolt. Sure. Okay, I'll. Any responses? Okay. That was so close to just killing me, by the way. Uh, yeah, then I can name red. Uh, I guess it doesn't matter. My creature dies either way. If I name red, it stays alive and then gets killed in combat. If I name white, then... Uh, it survives combat but gets bolted down. God damn it. Where's my burn? Hmm. 
Where's my burn? Okay, bet the screen is decent, but also very slow. Uh, Probably should be discarding this electric ray, but I don't know. Time issues and stuff, sure. <sighs> Bounce it still for Storm, I have no time for that. <laughs> no time for games. White, 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 white. Sure. Yeah, thank you for popping open my graveyard model. I would not have noticed without you. 13. I still have enough burn in my entire library to burn them out, but it's not guaranteed I find it in time. Uh, sure. Don't really have any valuable targets anymore. My vial is gone, sure, sure, sure. my last prismatic strength turn though though I don't necessarily need to even cast it on the board they might not have favorable attacks ah uh, that's going to be close yeah that's this is pretty heinous heinous yeah yeah, yeah I agree Sure, doesn't matter. I mean, shooting down the vials is smart so that I don't get like damage in the air that I can sneak in. But yeah, they're fully on the timeout plan now. They have to be, I think. And I'm fully on the find enough burn to burn them out before I timeout plan. Come on. I have seven points, yeah, it's going to be tough. Seven point puts them to six. Guess I have to calculate my chances of getting damage in, in the air at some point. Uh, how many flying blockers? Five. Against my 5, that deals 4 damage, so I'm already pretty close. Disable one of the blockers. Come on. Okay, I think I'm just doing that. Has to be okay for me, right? Also have to beat the timeout, so... Yeah, sure. I think I need to top deck Burn Spell this turn, otherwise I time out. I'll just let this happen and deal 4 to them. And then they're in Lightning Bolt Gavinic Blast range, assuming they don't play another removes by here. Yeah, 9. Oh god. This dealt with much of their ward. Yes! Come on, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. Don't time out on me, don't time out on me, don't time out of me. <sighs> Holy moly. I guess I have. Yes! Oh my fucking god, this matchup is such a 